Hello friends of Powerhouse Bakery. My name is Suzanne Parker and I'm the owner of this funky little bakery that loves to show the world that healthy can taste amazing. And I sure love seeing my diva friends popping in to visit. So thank you so much for coming to visit us and buying some of our goodies. We're in the middle of uh, getting ready for the holidays and so I'd love for you to pop by and see what we have for you that's super healthy in our fridge. Today I've got a really fun topic. Um, I've been doing a little bit of research, you know, as I always do for these um, these videos with you and it's so fun to learn with you. Um, one of my sons has a real passion around tea and so I decided to learn a little bit with him. Um, and as you know, uh, green tea is really recommended as part of a healthy anti-cancer way of life. And so what better reason to really delve into the category of tea and learn the different types, where they're grown, and what makes a, a great tea uh, worth uh, the expense, and um, what's kind of on the market? What do we find when we go to HEB and kind of explore the shelves to see um, how it's marketed to us, uh, what kind of merchandising is around it, and what can we expect? from a, a good tea and always learning ways to go from good to great. So get ready for some fun because we're, uh, we're going to explore together. There will be a, a few in this series, so just know that this will be a, uh, the starting point of really uh, what it means to enjoy a beautiful cup of tea. So here we go. What I've got right here is a nice variety. There's really six different types of tea and it really all comes from the same tea plant. But what makes the teas different is how they are um, not only grown, but the region where they're grown, and then how they're processed afterwards. So uh, I'll be taking you through this journey, but take a look at what I have so far. Um, here is our black tea. So I've done a, a little bottle display so we could really see what they look like. And this is the darkest tea. So this one is um, a brand that's called Two Leaves in a Bud, which I think is an awesome name. You know me and my puns, so this one's right up my alley. Um, this is an organic Assam. Um, it is a black tea that has individually wrapped um, little uh, sachets. So let me just show you what these sachets look like because there's so much uh, variety and oh my gosh, there's so much I want to share. I'm going to try to hold back and just take it step by step. So with this beautiful black tea, I want you to see what this little bag looks like. Sometimes the bags are paper. This happens to be a very fine uh, net, kind of almost a mesh. Um, and some people say this is better. Um, I'm going to give you more information on that, but let's just suffice to say that this is not a paper. This is a kind of a, an oil-based um, product that is kind of a net. So you can tell it's, it's uh, stretchy and it's got, of course, got the little paper at the end that's the identifier. And this box has plenty of them in it. And let's, for a moment, look at the front of pack labeling of this particular tea. We believe in the finest tea. Uh, it should be prepared in its most natural form, the whole leaf for a fuller, nuanced flavor. Um, as I'm learning about teas, I'm realizing that to have the vernacular to really describe the flavors and the aromas um, and the subtle differences of teas, it's almost as um, adventurous as learning how to describe and enjoy wine. It's that elaborate. Um, even olive oils has a wonderful way of describing all the different nuances. So get ready for some fun um, descriptors. But nonetheless, in this black tea, it's really um, trying to help us understand something about the company on this tea and also kind of what to look for as far as what's in the package. Also notice that it has USDA organic. Um, and for the most part, I was always recommending to get organic um, versus um, for example, look at this Lipton tea. This is 100% natural tea, and it doesn't have anything on the label that says it's organic. So this would be kind of your trash tea. It's um, made by a big company. It um, is going to really look at the highest profit margin for the lowest common level of knowledge to the customer. So if it's green tea, it's just going to live on the, the fact that um, it, on the front of pack it says support healthy heart, 
Most of us have heard something about green tea being good, so Limpton is going to really bank on that and just throw you up a basic tea, run of the mill. Not only is it not organic, it doesn't have very much information about uh, where the tea came from or anything about its qualities. It basically says zero calories, which of course we can, we can trust, and then uh, how many bags it has in the box. So pretty generic. The one that I'm showing you here, of course, by comparison, has a lot more information. It tells us about the origin, which is Assam, India. It talks about how much caffeine is there. Uh, it even tells us how to brew it, so five minutes. So this has been brewing about that long, and it's got a nice, beautiful amber color. And so we could enjoy this um, right out of the, the bottle or right out of the cup. Of course, we could add things to it, but that's a whole other chapter. So right now, what I want us to look at is the front of pack, the information we're getting about the tea and the color and if you're here you could also smell the aroma the next one down Again, there's six different varieties. The next one down is a green tea. So this one is really light in color. This one has a paper bag. So I'm going to show it to you in this form. So instead of that little wire mesh that's uh, made with like a polypropylene product, this is a paper. So it's going to dissolve easier. Some might say it's better for our environment because it's going to be uh, much more biodegradable. Still has a little paper at the end and it's going to drop in and of course the idea is you pull it out after it's steep time and you probably also can assume that the longer we leave it in the water, the stronger the flavor. Some will say even it turns from um, the peak of flavor and then it kind of turns that corner and starts to get bitter, which of course, of course you probably have heard that before too. Um, again, green tea, lighter in color than the dark, and we're moving down the line. So the next one, now we're starting to get into a little bit of the fruity colors. And I, I kind of put these in order mainly because of the, the brightness of color. Um, but I, I wanted you to see how the colors vary a lot, even if we now get to some of the other lighter teas um, that aren't, you know, in that full spectrum. Because in this one, it's a pure herbal tea. There aren't any green teas in this. It's all herbal. So when we look at the front of pack, Tazo is a really popular brand. You've probably heard of it. Um, it says, plunge into a paradise of hibiscus, orange peel, rose hips, and passion fruit. So whereas the first two I showed you have a tea leaf, this one is only herbal. So hibiscus is the flower that we use to make this beautiful color. And as you can imagine, instead of having bitter notes, it's going to have some sweet and sour notes. Um, and as the front of pack and as we turn it around, it kind of describes very similar, not like that Lipton tea. It's instead going to give us some information. What I thought was interesting is the brewing temperature of 212 is actually higher than what is recommended on the tea leaves, so the, the black tea and the green. Um, I even brought my thermometer because we were going to test the temperature of my water that I pulled out of my water um, cooler and heater. So we're going to test that in a second. But in general, we know that boiling is too hot for any of our teas to get it the best flavor. So it's somewhere between 212 and all the way down to about 160 is the best temperature for getting our tea. And then again, it tells us how long to brew. So again, about five minutes, which is the same as that green tea. Um, now, as we go a little bit further, it's talking about, well, what's good about hibiscus tea? Um, it, it really doesn't give you too many health benefits. It pretty much says um, that, you know, it's uh, exciting. It gives you a wonderful aroma. Dive in and stir things up. Curiosity. So it's not really talking about health per se because it doesn't really get to live with that green tea as a powerful antioxidant. One thing we love about green tea is the catechins and the polyphenols that are in green tea are really what has made it a worldwide favorite as far as an antioxidant um, power of, of a beverage. But remember that sometimes drinking a beverage, even like an herbal tea, while it might not have the catechins, it's also about what it might replace. Um, I read a great study that said if you drank a soda a day, that would give you about 50,000 calories in a year. Isn't that crazy? So if you were to give up that one soda and instead have a bottle of hibiscus tea instead, even if you put in a maybe a half a teaspoon of um, Splenda or even better yet, um, monk fruit, you could save and actually lose 15 pounds because you'd be saving that 50,000 calories. So isn't that amazing? So remember that when we're looking at beverages, part of the story is what does it offer us? The other part of the story is what does it 
prevent us from having in its place. So that opportunity cost, if you will. So this Tazo is beautiful. It's has no caffeine, of course, no calories. Um, while it doesn't have the antioxidant power of the greens, it still has some great qualities. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to switch these around. This one, I've stuffed my own little bag. And so this one is a blend of this. So I had to use my cute little uh, sachet. And I love these because now we are going to get to start mixing our own teas. So it's this fabulous little delicate paper. It's a one-time use. Um, this particular tea is one that um, I actually got from a friend. And as you look at this, you can really see some interesting qualities. These little dark pieces are actually the leaves. Uh, in one of our next videos, I'm going to show you the difference. But take note today at how tiny and broken up these little leaves are. Um, I've seen some fabulous um, teas from China as well as Vietnam and other locations around the world that are big, beautiful um, teas. Even ones, get this, they sew the leaves and the bud back together and when you put it into your hot water it opens up and has this beautiful piece of art in your glass. I ordered that one so it's coming. But anyway, so um, what's interesting about this is it's fair trade organic mango green tea. So we can assume that these are the little mango flowers. You know, again, I, I don't have a lot of label on this one, but just looking at it helps us kind of get an idea of what's in store for us. And to make a 12 ounce um, bottle of tea. It takes about two teaspoons, which is my little my little scoop here. And so you just tighten up your little sachet and you drop it in. And that's what I just did here. And I did let it steep for um, at least five minutes. And so now I'm going to take this out and um, tea experts say you never want to squeeze the water out because that pulls a lot of the bitterness that was left in not only the paper, but in the residual of those tea leaves. So I'm going to take this out and drop it right into the trash. And now we have our beautiful, pretty robust color of tea. And again, this is a green tea with some mango colors and flavors. So when I smell it, it has very strong um, citrus flavors. So there's our mango tea with green tea. So again, notice the difference in color. Here's my black tea and my green tea, right? Not that much difference. You'd almost expect this one to be a black tea. Here is our other tea. This is green and it is very light in color. So we can assume that the flavors are going to be a little stronger as the color gets darker. Um, but what also I think is interesting is the nuances of the green. Um, sometimes when it's just plain green tea, it's going to have not only more polyphenols, um, it's also going to have some different subtle flavors, lemongrass, even some citrus, even some bamboo flavors in this green tea. And also notice that when the tea is brought to us in the little bags versus wide open, um, it's going to probably be fresher. And so that's something that we want to be aware of. If we're going to buy loose leaf tea, we want to get it probably in a small quantity and keep it in an airtight container so that it really holds its uh, aromatics and the delicacies of the tea leaves. Okay, so here is another one. And again, this is one where I just dropped the loose tea into my little uh, bottle. And Mm, it smells really good. This one I just bought, so the freshness component is there. This one is called Fruity Pebbles. Um, strawberry pineapple added to the green tea. So the ingredients, green tea, pineapple, which is pineapple and cane sugar, black tea, so now we've got a blend, a green and a black, um, and it's got lots of sugars added. So right, it's sugar made with, uh, or added with the pineapple as well as um, the mango. So, and then natural flavors, which we're not exactly sure what that's all about. So, the interesting thing is when we start going in to a flavored fruity tea, you can do one that's no calorie, or we can have one that has some kind of hidden sugars in it. But it certainly does try to help us feel like it's a healthy choice. Um, unlike the Tazo, it's got some more uh, information on the front of pack that helps us want to think that it's a really healthy choice. In fact, it's even called slenderizing tea. Who doesn't want to buy something that's going to make us slender, right? But it's a little bit misleading because it does have added sugar. Not to mention if we drink this, is it going to make us want even more sweetness? I know that's another topic. But what I think is so interesting is that in addition to being a slenderizer tea, it does have a little bit of added sugar. Also notice that it's giving us a caffeine rating. That's because there's some black tea and some green tea in this product. 
Um, again, if I flip it over, it gives me the brewing technique. So one and a half teaspoons for eight ounces. Remember I said about two teaspoons per 12 ounces. So a lot of subjectivity there, but because this one has some of the herbals, the strawberry and the pineapple fruits, you're probably gonna be tempted to have it a little bit stronger in flavor. Pour hot water over your tea. It doesn't say anything about boiling or not, so it's a little general. Uh, and then it tells you how to steep your tea. So it gives you uh, a, a temperature here, 175 degrees. Oolong tea is 195 degrees, but we don't have oolong in here, so that's a little misleading, right? Um, so in general, what we find is that the general market teas, whether they are a green tea that's considered um, kind of the extra high end, it's got a picture of the beautiful people that are gathering it, it wants you to think of where it's grown and it's kind of appealing to our uh, down to earth and small farmers, big change. Um, Whenever we have front of pack information, it could be misleading. And of course, it could have some valuable information. So buyer beware when we start looking at why and what do we choose our teas all about. So if I wanted to do, if I wanted to enjoy this tea, of course I'm going to have to strain it in order to enjoy it, but without all those little pieces of tea. So here I've got my beautiful tea cup. And I've got my little strainer, so I'm just going to pour it right in. Now, of course, if you didn't want to go through this step, you could have your tea in a little holder like this. Honestly, I've never really enjoyed these. I don't know. It just feels like it's more cumbersome, and you have to put it in your cup. And so I've just never really gotten used to these. But if you had a teapot, you could put up to two tablespoons in here and certainly make uh, all the trouble worth it by making more tea. But that's a, certainly a good one. So notice after I've strained my beautiful slenderizing tea, I have a cute little eight ounce cup. And you know, there's something really beautiful about enjoying a beautiful cup of tea with people. And that's something I, I think is so neat that um, my son has really gained an appreciation for. Um, when he was in high school for his high school graduation, I bought him this really special uh, cast iron um, teapot with these little tiny teacups and of course the coffee drinker in me thought who in the heck's going to want to drink that small amount of tea but when you realize how fun it is to make it and the whole process of it it becomes really clear why we love to do it so here I'm going to add a, a few of my little mint leaves right out of my garden so that makes it even more special um, so again I've got my slenderizing tea that has a blend of green and black which is probably why it gave me a temperature range for oolong tea, even though it does not say it has oolong in there. It wants you to think that it does. Um, but it's certainly a nice, easy to drink, very pretty tea. Mm, and it tastes really nice. I don't really taste a lot of sweetness. So in all fairness, it probably is going to be good for slenderizing, as long as I don't have the temptation to put some honey into it. Okay, so there is my slenderizing tea. So let's go down to the last one. This one is a white tea. Now granted, it doesn't look all that white um, compared to my green tea. Gosh, it almost looks exactly the same, right? Um, when I did my studies, I realized that white tea is the least processed of the teas. Um, and so if we were trying to get something very low processed, maybe that would be a good choice. The white tea is going to be the most light in flavor as well as typically lightest in color and it's going to have the most um, nuances. So maybe some vanilla notes, maybe some um, herbals as well as florals. Mm, and so this reminds me of going into a, a Chinese restaurant and it has sort of that smell of jasmine tea. It's kind of what it reminds me of. And it's very soft flavor. You know, as a coffee connoisseur, it does take me a few cups of tea before I can really start to hone in on the, the subtle flavors. And again, I, I can't emphasize enough how great it is to have the words to describe it. So I'm going to keep introducing words as we go so we can start connecting a flavor that we think. And now we start playing into it. So vanilla, um, licorice, maybe some um, herbal notes, so rosebud. Uh, that's all the kind of the nuances that I'm noticing in this vanilla tea, which is really just a white tea. Now I'm going to get a little bit more technical with you. So remember, keep in mind that the white is the least processed. 
And then the second level up is the green teas, which is a lot of different types of green teas. But I'm going to start putting them in order so you can kind of see where I'm going with this. So our white tea, and then our green. And again, lots of different variations. So I'm going to put my mango tea. It has, remember the dark one? It has the color probably darker because it's maybe got some of that mango, but it is called a mango green tea. So I'll put that one next. And my black tea is going to go on the very end. And somewhere in the middle are going to be these combination teas. And then, of course, my herbal tea, which granted, it's not really part of the green tea family, but we think of it as part of that tea family. So I'm just going to put it right in there so you can see the spectrum. The one that I don't have for you today is a yellow tea. And so um, next time I get to show you teas, I'll be able to show you all the different colors. But the yellow is kind of hard to find, so uh, bear with me on that note. But as I did this research, I learned that the white tea, um, once the leaves are harvested, they let them dry in the sun. So the sun lets those leaves very delicately just air dry. The next stage, which the white tea does not do, is the green. And what they do there is they either, if it's Japanese, they will steam the tea leaves. If it's Chinese, they will fry the, the leaves. Um, and that helps to, to activate and liber liberate the catechism the catechins and the, the polyphenol. So all those antioxidants are then liberalized as those tea leaves are, are moistened either with the steam or the pan fry. The next stage is that they let them sit and they almost let them uh, warm up and those flavors start to meld. And um, if it turns into a black tea, that's when even more of those polyphenols are liberated, hence the dark color. And that's when we start getting the dark color. So the tea leaves, after they are air dried in the sun and then either steamed or fried, then they're put into a roller and it bruises up all the leaves and that's what creates the dark color. So it's interesting when we think of a white tea being the least amount of processed, softest flavors, but probably the lower amount of antioxidants than the darker teas. Now, the difference too is that when we go from a green tea to a black tea, one is going to be cooked more. So the darker the color, it's going to be bruised more and then actually cooked more than the green tea, which is really just going to be air dried and then very delicately steamed or pan fried. Amazing differences. Um, the other thing that I learned is when we have teas that come from a very high region um, in, the, um, in the Orient, we'll say, uh, there's less need for pesticides. There's also a lot more expense having these different farms go through the process of being um, certified organic. So a lot of these farmers have chosen not to do that so that they can keep their price where it is. And let's face it, in my research, teas are not cheap if you start getting into higher levels. But it becomes a really fine art. It's kind of like with wine and even coffee. Um, we start learning all these different nuances and it becomes really a, um, a hobby, but also something really fun. Um, and lastly, uh, part of my research was really about the Ayurvedic teas. And I'll be talking about those more as well, but an Ayurvedic tea is where we add in lots of other things into our green tea base. And you might have seen some of those when you come into Powerhouse Bakery. Um, my hydration teas are kind of along the same idea, where you start off with a very simple green tea or maybe even a white tea, and then we start adding seeds, so coriander and fenugreek, um, fennel, and then you could even add pieces of orange or mint or lemon um, or cucumber and all of those wonderful nuances add to not only the joy of that tea but also increase the antioxidant power by the vitamin C and by the um, extra antioxidants that we're adding in from those seeds. And so stay tuned because I've got a lot of fun things that I'm going to share with you about the beauty of tea. And um, I was searching my, my cookbook shelf and I even came across this very interesting book, Steeped. So recipes infused with tea. So stay tuned because I am definitely going to have some fun with you and tea. Um, not only can we make wonderful um, 
um, flavored juices to add into things like muffins, but we can even add them to yogurts um, as well as smoothies. And so stay tuned for lots of fun things with teas. And in the meantime, I challenge you to hop online and explore the differences of the antioxidant powers of different teas and see what you have in your cabinet and see if you are sticking with Tazo or maybe the that lean green organic machine of the tea market or do you have the run-of-the-mill basic? So remember that even if you have the run-of-the-mill basic, it's still probably better than a sweetened drink. But maybe we can even take it from good to great, learning about all these fabulous ways to really build our banquet of teas. So thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.